Hola, soy Ana, soy mexicana y soy tu maestra de español. I'm going to teach you Spanish. And in today's class, en la clase de hoy, we're going to learn about a lot of information about the verb quedar. O su primo, quedarse. Quedar and quedarse. You see, quedar is a very important verb in Spanish. In the order of importance, quedar is very high up. The reason is, well, Spanish speakers use it a lot because it's important, but also because they replace other verbs. And so they use quedar instead of many other verbs. It's a very, let's say, very uh, useful, very useful verb in Spanish. Now, quedar, as I said, because they replace many other verbs with quedar, you know, you can see, you can think of quedar and think of to remain. You can use quedar. To arrange, quedar. To meet, quedar. To stay, quedarse. To fit, quedar. To plan to do, quedar. To be located, quedar. To agree, quedar. Ah, too much, demasiado. To have something to, to, to have something left, quedar. ¿Puedes creerlo? Yo, a veces, no. Sometimes I don't believe it. But then I see it and I believe it. But sometimes it's hard to believe it. That all these verbs often can be, let's say in Spanish, you can use quedar o quedarse, as we will see. Ahora, it's good, right? You'll say, ay, okay, sure. So I'll memorize that. No, you don't have to memorize that. You have to Look at it and see, okay, remain, agree to, uh, to have something left, to be located. I can use quedar. But the way you're going to learn it is with examples. Because with examples, you're going to be visualize it. Yes, okay, so you have an idea now of so many verbs and the lowly quedar. But then we're going to see the examples so you can learn. And for that, I also brought my other hand to help you learn, to point out. So, quedar, quedarse, and all the things you can do with it. Pero, vamos a aprender con ejemplos. Let's learn with examples. Okay, let's, let's put this, let's put this to work in the real life. Because my classes, my, my Spanish classes, mis clases de español, they are about real life. I'm not going to give you a lot of uh, terminology that is like, oh, the academy and oh, blah, blah. I'm going to give you examples that are actually used and that you can incorporate in your Spanish. Muy bien. Muy bien. Ahora, I wrote some examples of the expressions that I thought of, that, that, that I thought they could come handy to you. <laughs> Too distracting, but it's good because sometimes my, my hands are short. Mis, mis, mis brazos son cortos. Oh, y ves? By the way, before I start, I am really happy to be using the big board, you know, because I feel free. I feel like I can fly. Puedo volar. So let's fly and learn Spanish. I want to say, quiero decir, me quedé sola. Me quedé sola. Sola porque soy Ana. Soy una muchacha, sola. Pero si yo fuera Pedro, and I had mustache, y tuviera bigote, podría decir, me quedé solo, ¿no? Por eso le, le puse una, una, A aquí, porque puede ser sola, pero puede ser solo, ¿no? Con una O. Sola o solo. Si soy Pedro con mi bigote, me quedé solo, diría, ¿no? I would say. Me quedé solo, pero soy Ana con mis flores, me quedé sola, ¿ves? Which is, I stayed alone, I stayed by myself, ¿sí? All my family left, me quedé sola. ¿Qué haces? Nada, me quedé sola. No estoy haciendo nada, me quedé sola. So, I stayed alone, right? So, here, quedar is taking, I stayed, the, the, let's say, it, it's, it, it, it's the... The, the translation of I stay. I stayed alone, I stayed by myself, me quedé sola, o me quedé solo. La siguiente es una orden. La siguiente is an order. Huh? Who doesn't like to give orders? I mean, some people, but I like to give orders. Quédate aquí, 
Stay here. <laughs> Con mi mano. Ay, es que mi mano. Quédate aquí. ¿Sí? It's an order. Quédate aquí. Stay here. Quédate aquí. No te muevas. Don't move. Quédate aquí. Quédate aquí. Again. Stay here. ¿Mm? Stay here. Quédate aquí. That doesn't matter if it's Ana or Pedro. You still give the same order to that person. <laughs> Quédate aquí, Pedro. Quédate aquí, Ana. No te muevas. Don't move. Muy bien. La siguiente. Quedamos a las cinco. Quedamos a las cinco. Quedamos, ¿no? We, we said we would meet at five. We said we would meet at five. Our plans, after we saw each other, after we talked, we said we would meet at five. Quedamos a las cinco. ¿Sí? Meet, ¿no? Replaces. Quedamos a las cinco de la tarde. ¿Sí? Sometimes you can use it to... To, let's say, say, quedamos en, and the place where you're going to see that person. Oh, quedamos en, por ejemplo, en México, el Vips o el Tox, ¿no? Those are restaurants that sometimes when you have, like, you know, a meeting or something, it's like, it's a restaurant that is going to be everywhere. There's one ev uh, close by. Siempre hay uno cerca. There's always one close by. Siempre hay uno cerca. Quedamos en el Vips. Quedamos a las cinco. We said we would meet at five. We said we would meet at the beeps. ¿Entiendes? ¿Te queda claro? Is that clear? ¿Te queda claro? What am I using there? Ah, quedar. <laughs> quedar. Again, you see, oh, so many meanings. Ok, ¿te queda claro? Sí, sí me queda claro, Ana. O, no, Ana, estás loca, no me queda claro. No, tu explicación no es clara. O oh, sí, Ana, sí me queda claro. Bueno, la siguiente es, me quedé como tonto. O puede ser, me quedé como tonta. I would say, me quedé como tonta. Pero si tuviera mi bigote y fuera Pedro, y fue Pedro, diría, me quedé como tonto, con una O. What does it mean? I was left looking like a fool. You see, por ejemplo, you see something that, you, you made a mistake, right? You, te quedé con, you, I was left looking like a fool. Maybe you did something and you were like, me quedé como tonto. Or you saw something very shocking and you're like, oh, me quedé como tonto. No, it doesn't have to be like a fool. It was like, I was left like, you know, like it's shocking and you're like, huh? Like in disbelief. I was left in disbelief. Me quedé como tonta. Me quedé como tonta. Mira, la otra vez, last time, la otra vez, I got on the bus. Yes, okay. And one person passed by me and with his backpack, boom, boom, me aventó por allá, ¿no? Me, me, me dio un golpe. So I said, well, it didn't give him a dirty look. Probably doesn't see the, the, the extensions of his backpack. La persona no pues no, no tiene idea de lo grande que estaba su mochila, backpack, mochila. La volteé a ver así como, ¿no? como con orgullo, así. Hmm, you did something wrong. <laughs> a little bit, right? So, this guy says, ¿qué? I'm like, besides kidding me with his backpack, he said, like, what? what, 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 what's your problem? Huh? Me quedé como tonta. I was, I was left in disbelief. Me quedé como tonta. I didn't know what to say. I wanted to say a lot of things. But sometimes when you're right there, you don't know like, the, the best things to say, right? But I was, why? Me quedé como tonta. See, now you will picture it. Now you remember when, when it happened. I hope it doesn't happen to you. Espero que no te pase. <laughs> but if it happens to you, I say, see, when you're telling somebody, it's like, oh, si me quedé como tonta. <laughs> o tonto. Bueno. La siguiente, ah, no, before I go to the next one. Quedamos en ridículo. Oh, perdón, hay un ruido, hice un ruido con mi mano. Mejor, you know what, I'm going to get rid of my hand. Because it, even though I love my hand, I feel like maybe it's just getting on my way. Mm, ni modo, I like my hand, but I don't think I can use it. I don't feel comfortable with it yet. Maybe I'll practice. Quedamos en ridículo. 
quedamos en ridículo es we were left in ridicule. <laughs> When I think of this word ridicule, ridículo, have you watched The Big Lebowski? <laughs> bueno, Julianne Moore gets on the phone and she says something like, ¡Qué ridículo! ¿Sí? She's using that word ridículo. ¡Qué ridículo! Well, you say, quedamos en ridículo. It was, we were left in ridicule. Quedamos en ridículo. Otro ejemplo, ¿ok? Let me give you otro ejemplo. My big family, let's say my, my mother's, la familia de mi mamá, which is a very big family, had a party. Now, my family thought that that party, they were supposed to wear the same outfits, like everybody dresses the same outfits. But it wasn't that party, it was a different party. So they were, I didn't go. <laughs> yo no quedé en ridículo porque yo no fui. <laughs> Fueron y llegaron todos vestidos de, con el mismo color, el mismo vestido, lo que sea, y todos así, como la familia, y nos como, ¿y estos qué onda? <laughs> ¿Qué les pasa? ¿no? ¿Qué? Quedaron en ridículo. They were left in ridicule. Sí, quedaron en ridículo. Yo no quedé en ridículo. <laughs> Porque no fui. Pero bueno, ahora sí, let's go to the next one. El hospital queda cerca. You see, we talk about to be located, right? Where is located? Queda cerca. The hospital is close by. The hospital is far. El hospital queda lejos. Queda lejos. El hospital queda lejos. El hospital queda cerca. The hospital is close by, queda cerca. The hospital is far. El hospital queda lejos, lejos. Cerca, and we, let's write, lejos, lejos. No lejos, lejos. Como si esta J fuera una, digamos, think about an H, right? Lejos, lejos. ¿Mm? Claro, but I'm going to erase it. Get my eraser. Because then... Um, You, it'll distract you and then you'll think it's written with an H. Y no se escribe con una H, se escribe con una J. Me gusta mucho la letra J. Bueno, queda lejos, queda cerca. Or you can say an specific address. Queda en la quinta avenida, ¿no? Queda en la avenida Benito Juárez, ¿no? There are millions of avenidas Benito Juárez en México. Quedó mucha comida. Quedó mucha comida. There were a lot of leftovers. Oh, there was a lot of food left over. You know, when you have a gathering, no? and there's a lot of food left over. How did you say it in Spanish? She said, well, quedó mucha comida. Quedó. It was left. A lot of food was left. Quedó mucha comida. Ayer cociné. Para seis personas. Yesterday I cooked for six people. Sí, I was expecting six people. I cooked for six people, but then I think maybe I overdid it. So I had a lot of leftovers. Quedó mucha comida. ¿Quieres un poco? Sí, te mando un poco de comida porque quedó mucha comida. But it doesn't matter because you can put it in the fridge, in the freezer. No, la puedes. Poner en el congelador, en el refrigerador, refrigerador, ay, refrigerador como cubano. Muy bien. La siguiente es something that comes in, like is very handy to use when when you're talking to somebody. You want to give them a, a how do you say when you say something nice about a person, you know, to to make them feel good. Well, whatever. Like for example, that color suits you. ¿Mm? Te queda bien ese color. Ay. María, te queda muy bien ese color. Te queda bien ese color. That color suits you. That, that color looks perfect on you. Hmm? That's something nice to say to people. Te queda bien ese color. O te queda bien esa camisa, that dress shirt. Te queda bien ese vestido. Sí, te queda bien ese vestido. Mi mamá es una experta. And my mom is an expert in saying these things because... Sometimes I think she over, overdoes it <laughs> because sometimes like, 
that didn't really, you know, didn't look at it like, oh no, see, see, I know, let's give people something nice so they feel they are happy. So I'm like, okay, so, but you can say it honestly, you can say, te queda bien ese vestido, te queda bien esa camisa, ¿ves? That color suits you. Now you could say, it doesn't suit you, but you could also say, it doesn't fit you. ¿Eh? Te queda is it fits you. Sí, te queda. Te queda. That thing fits you. Sí, te queda. Te queda. Te queda muy bien. That fits you. Or, no, it doesn't fit you. No te queda. No, a ver, déjame verte. No, no te queda. Sí, está flojo. No, no, no se te ve bien. Otra talla, a different size. No te queda. Now, no te queda... Is when somebody, all, it could also use, uh, be used, sometimes you may hear it, when a person is making a scene, like kids, for example, no? Okay, if a, a toddler is making, you know, is having a, a crisis and he's crying, well, they are toddlers, right? But maybe a, a, like an older kid is making a scene, you know, and yeah, screaming and kicking, and it's like, and you could say, no, no te queda, like for your age, and what you're doing just doesn't, doesn't fit, you know, it's not right. <laughs> no te queda. Making that scene doesn't fit you. No te queda. You could also use it that way. Muy bien. Okay. Queda claro? I could ask you this question, as I said before. Queda claro? Or I can ask you, te queda claro? Te queda claro? Oh, queda claro to everybody? Is it clear? Is it clear? ¿Queda claro? You could say, sí, queda claro. Sí, or sí, me queda claro. It's clear to me. Me queda claro. Muy bien. Um, you could say in the past, for example, quedó claro. Sí, ese tema, that topic, was clear. Quedó claro, ¿no? In that case, quedó would be written like, I'm going to write it here. Let's say, quedó. El tema quedó. Quedó claro, ¿sí? En el pasado, was left clear. ¿sí? Quedó claro. Muy bien. La siguiente es quedar satisfecho. When you're satisfied, when you are left satisfied. Quedar satisfecho. Either that you ate something nice or you did something nice and you were satisfied. You were left satisfied with what you did. Entonces, sí, quedé satisfecha porque soy Ana. Sí, quedé satisfecho, porque soy Pedro, ¿ves? Tú que say, sí, quedé satisfecha, quedé satisfecho. Often people use, when they go out, they go to restaurants and say, oh, yeah, quedé satisfecho, I was left satisfied. ¿Sí? You can use it if you go out with your friends. Business people, you would say, queda pendiente, It's, it remains pending, it, that topic is still pending, queda pendiente. That means maybe we didn't have time to talk about it today in the meeting. Este tema queda pendiente. O esto, this, is, is, is going to be left pending. ¿Sí? Something is left pending. Something that is to be, you know, talked about in the future. Queda pendiente. Queda pendiente, quedar satisfecho. Now, if I tell you a secret, si te digo un secreto, ¿no? Si te digo un secreto, I could say, hey, but listen, escucha, ¿eh? escucha esto. Esto se queda aquí. What I told you stays here. Esto, this, stays here. Esto se queda aquí. Es nuestro secreto. ¿eh? Ok, no le digas a nadie del verbo quedar. Solo tú aprende el verbo quedar. Esto se queda aquí. Esta información se queda aquí. This stays here. ¿Eh? No le vayas a decir a tus amigos acerca del verbo quedar. Bueno. Um, another phrase that you can uh, use is quedé mal. O quedé bien. Quedé mal. Quedé mal. It's like, I was left bad. I mean, like, I had a bad, um, I don't say, I want to say reputation, but it's not really reputation. Let me explain to you. So, for example, last time a person was supposed to bring guacamole to the gathering, right? But she showed up without guacamole. But she said she would, have, she would bring guacamole, but she didn't. 
¿Mm? Quedó mal. She was left bad, right? She was left with bad reputation. She's got bad standing after that, you know? Her friendship was in the pretty high in the pyramid, but it went to really the bottom because if you say you're going to bring guacamole, well, then bring guacamole or even bring the avocados. I make the guacamole. Yo lo hago. Pero no llegó así. Oh, yo lo... Nada. Sin guacamole, sin totopo, sin nada. Quedó mal. ¿Sí? I'm not going to tell you the name. ¿no? Quedó mal. Quedó bien. Now imagine that person would have done her job. Some nice guacamole with cilantro, limoncito, salita, ay, qué rico, todo, no, ya, uh, se me hace agua la boca, my mouth is watery. Extra guacamole with the best avocados, mm, ahora se quedó bien, she's left in good standing, she was left well, she was left good, you know, her standing in the friendship pyramid, it's pretty, actually, when one step up. No es el caso. But in the ideal world. Muy bien. Ya sabes entonces. Ahora, no me quedó de otra. No me quedó de otra. I didn't have a choice. No. Today I missed the bus. No. Se me fue el autobús. No, el autobús de las 11.30. Pum, se fue. No, yo llegué corriendo. Nada, llegué tarde. <laughs> well, you know, I was there. Uh, no me quedó de otra. I didn't have a choice. I had, I had, to, I had to be late. No me quedó de otra. There wasn't a choice. Taxis, that, that wasn't a choice. Like that wasn't an option. Uh, running, I don't run so fast that I would have arrived all sweaty and uh, maybe with like glowy skin, but then all tired. So. No me quedó de otra. I had to stay. I didn't have a choice. I didn't have a choice. No me quedó de otra. I had to wait. I had to be late. Lo siento. Perdóname. No, así es. And the last one that I forgot. <laughs> I was supposed to explain it here. But when I was writing this lesson, I said, oh, I'll put it next to it because it connects. And when I developed the lesson, my brain didn't connect. <laughs> so, I'm sorry, again, lo siento. But I don't want to be, I don't want to live without telling you this. No quedamos en nada. You see here, I explained to you, oh, we said we would meet at five. Quedamos a las cinco. Quedamos a las cinco. Pedro y yo quedamos a las cinco. Oh, we said we would meet at the talks. Pedro y yo quedamos en el talks, ¿no? Que sea. Um, But maybe we said nothing. We didn't, we, we, we didn't actually, um, we didn't say what we would do next, you know? We forgot. We were talking. We got distracted. And so we, we didn't say when we would meet, where, or anything. We didn't talk about it. So, no quedamos en nada. We We're left in nothing. Means we didn't plan to do anything. We didn't plan to meet. No place, no time, etc. We, the, we, we literally would be like, we left in nothing, you know? <laughs> But it's like, oh, we, we didn't talk about it. We didn't say anything, you know? Maybe I'll give him a call. No quedamos en nada. Oh, no quedamos en nada. See? Maybe, maybe next time I'll, I'm going to teach you, right? But maybe we left in nothing. So then, oh, what am I going to teach that person? At what time? Where? So I have to write an email. Because why? No quedamos en nada. ¿Sí? So it's better to actually quedar en algo. Quedamos a las cinco o quedamos en el talks. Muy bien. Well, that's the lesson for today. As you can see, I'm using here all the verb quedar. The verb quedar. It's a very important verb. Now, if you want to learn to conjugate it, if you see the, in the, below the description, I'm going to put the conjugation there in present and in past, so you could see what conjugations I, I, I used. Because, for example, yo quedo, tú quedas, él queda, 
ustedes quedan, nosotros quedamos, ellos quedan, right? The verb just takes different endings. You probably know this if you're watching this lesson. And if not, you can take a look at the conjugation for each verb, right? Now, the other thing I want to say is I put quedarse, I wrote quedarse here. So when you say, when you see, for example, me quedé como tonto o me quedé como tonta, right? You're really using this because let's say you're using this one, right? So quedarse would be like me quedé. We're using the pronouns. Pronouns like me quedé, te quedaste, se quedó. If you want to learn more about these type of verbs, please watch my lesson about indirect and direct pronouns. Muy bien. And about reflexive verbs. I have three lessons about those topics and you can learn more about quedarse, ¿sí? And these interesting pronouns. Muy bien. But at the moment, I just wanted to leave you the phrases, the common phrases I thought it could come handy to you. And I forgot one, one <laughs> that I just thought of. The reason I was late is because I slept in. And how do you say that in Spanish? I slept in. Well, that's a beautiful thing. I slept in. You're going to say, me quedé dormida. <laughs> me quedé dormida. It's, I slept in. I didn't plan to. I didn't want to. But it happened. Me quedé dormida. Me quedé dormida. You could say, dormido. Pero yo voy a decir, me quedé dormida. ¿Por qué llegaste tarde, Ana? Perdón, es que me quedé dormida. <laughs> sí, quedé. Otra vez quedar. So you see how many, many, many uses this verb has? Infinite. Every time you read something, you're going to find another meaning of quedar because it really is endless. That's why it's important to listen and to read in Spanish. So you add to your Spanish. Muy bien. Muchas gracias por ver esta clase. Muchas gracias. Espero que hayas aprendido. I hope you learned. I really wanted you to learn this topic. I think it's important. If you are interested in learning more, watch some, uh, some other videos. I have videos about different, different topics. And you can watch, like, you can complement uh, this video with other uh, videos that I am going to recommend to you. You can subscribe to my newsletter that I send once in a while it's at butterflyspanish.com. And remember that if you like my lessons and you would like uh, to help me develop more, more lessons, you can donate and you can donate to my channel, butterflyspanish.com. Muchas gracias. Me da mucho gusto verte. It's, I'm very happy to see you. I'm very glad to see you. Take care. Cuídate mucho y nos vemos pronto.